Okay. Ghostbusters. New one's coming out. I've only seen the first one. I've seen... The first two. The first two. I haven't seen the girl one yet. Neither of us have seen the third one. I've only seen the first one once. And it was, like, last year. So I, I don't have a lot of nostalgia for this movie. Like... A lot of people my age would. Plus he said he didn't remember it. I didn't remember much of it, no. Um, I have seen this movie and the second one multiple times. Um, I have a lot of nostalgia for this movie. And the second one as well. Most of my notes are not about the movie. Let me see your notes. I wrote down their names. Okay. And then... Not much else. Most of my notes are about other movies. Or other things. Like the film history that we talked about. Gotcha. Um, we discuss how it's rated PG. And they do swear and use innuendos a lot in this movie. Well, it started because... You had said something about it being for kids. Yeah, I thought it was a kid's movie. Was, I've always thought it was a kid's movie, but there, the, like, as I watched it, I realized it was not a kid's movie. I don't know why I've always, th like, and I watched it recently, too, so I don't know why I thought it is a kid's movie. But I got to feel really big brain, because I said it wasn't for kids, and she retorted by saying that it was PG, not PG-13. And I retorted by saying that this probably came out before PG-13 existed. And we looked it up, and it came out like a month before exactly PG-13. Exactly a month. This, this the, movie was released June, June 1st? 1st, 1984. And Ghostbusters was released... No, PG-13. Oh, yeah. PG-13 was, was July. released July 1st, 1984. Which I'm pretty sure they said June. The movie was released on June 1st. The rating existed... I don't know if it was July 1st, but it was very early July. Let me look this up again. Hold also on. 1984. Uh, so I felt, I felt really good about that. Uh, and then she had... She was talking about the second movie, which I had not seen. And, and I was checking. And the second one is also rated PG, whereas the third one and the new one are rated PG-13. And so we learned that after the success of the first one, they made the animated series, and so there was then a more significant child audience. So the well, second it was one... So the first one was popular with kids, so they made an animated series for kids because the first one wasn't intended for kids. And then because the animated series and the first one were so popular with kids, they made the second live-action film... More aimed more, at children. Yeah, more aimed at kids. Which is why, even though the PG-13 rating existed by the second film, it still had the PG-13 rating, whereas the newer two films are up to PG-13. It, it was July 1st, 1984. So Fan literally exactly one month. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and, then, and then we talked a little bit about Gremlins and Indiana Jones and whether or not this would have been considered disturbing images... If the PG-13 rating had existed, which I, I think it, it probably would have been well, PG-13. Well, like, by, I, I... It's pretty uh, by the comparable end of to it, Gremlins. Yes. Yeah, the, yeah those, those weird gargoyle things would uh, would upset some children. Uh, we're going to talk about lamps? I, I challenge anyone to find me a movie that has a shot... With more lamps in it than one of the shots at the beginning of this movie in the library. There are so many lamps there in this There are shot. so many lamps. I'll, I'll give him that. There are a lot of lamps. Like, I was like, is this Mothman? I love lamp. Like that. I love lamp. Um, and then one of the first. Uh, there, were so, there were at least uh, 50 lamps. I wanted to count, but I didn't want to make her upset. He wanted to count, but he pauses the movie, and, like, you can't... There's no shot with all of the lamps, right. though. 
Yeah, you'd have to pick one shot and get the most amount of lamps in one shot, not in one scene. Um, but then one of the first examples of ghostly activity we see is, is a card catalog in the library. And, like, I know I've used those before. It's been a while. I don't totally remember what they are and how they work. But I asked her if she had ever used one, and she said no. I've never heard of a card catalog, even... Um, there was, there's like a card for each book, and I believe, at least the way that I used them in my school was like, you would look up a book in the card catalog, and then it would tell you, using the Dewey Decimal System, where it was, and then you could go find it on the shelves. I think that's how it was used in my school, but that was a long time ago. So that ago. ghost just absolutely wrecked the library's right card catalog Dewey Decimal System. Indeed. Last so. time I heard Dewey Decimal System, it was in Tinkerbell and the Twin Wings. Uh, my next note is Bill Murray is a creep, which is especially true in this movie, and he never yeah. gets better. I thought it, they were I it, thought they were high school students at first in the beginning. But um, it turns out that they're, they're not. Students, they're, yeah. yeah, they're on they're on a university campus. But like he he never, you know, characters like this that are jerks and that are arrogant and whatever. Like usually, you want them to learn a lesson, and then they can have their happy ending. But he never learned a lesson. He never gets punished or anything for what he does. And like he his yeah, his he just, he just his best women. his best character moment is that he doesn't take advantage of Dana when she's unconscious like a worse person would, but he still does kiss her, and that's not like the worst thing he could have done. But still, dude, she's passed out after being possessed. Just don't kiss unconscious women. Um, he, he didn't kiss her. Kiss her. He kissed her on the neck and on the hand. I thought it was, like, her shoulder. So, uh, so, it, it, somewhere. Somewhere above the... Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I just... Ca- I just, like, bust. you know, just let him... One time, just let him, you know, see... Because he's the worst. He, like, pressures what's-his-face into putting a third mortgage on his house. He's, like, constantly getting other people to take risks that he won't do. He's not a good person, not a good yeah. friend. I don't like characters like that. But then, I didn't realize how much of that was going to be prevalent when I wrote that note. I just don't understand why people like Bill Murray so much. I understand at the time, I don't know if he was doing SNL by this time or not, I assume so. He, he probably got famous from SNL first and then did big movies. So I get that like, people at the time were fans of Bill Murray because they saw him do funny stuff. But like, I, I don't get the current mass appeal that people at my age that did not grow up watching him on Saturday Night Live half for Bill Murray. I feel like some people like think that he's like the bee's knees. And I don't get it. Maybe I'm missing something. That's my hot take. My Bill Murray hot take. Yeah, Bill Murray is a creep in this movie. Um, he hits on a lot of women. And like... The beginning scene is really uncomfortable. There's a... Uh... If you don't, if you haven't seen or don't remember the, like, most of Ghostbusters, like, um, the opening scene is there, two, two college students, a male and a female, are in front of Bill Murray's character, and, um, they're guessing shapes on cards, and... Even if the man, even if the male gets it right, even if the boy college student gets it right, um, he still electrocutes him. Which and I thought. Even if the girl character is wrong about guessing the shape, um, he is like, "Oh my God, you're so good at this!" Like, I thought the fact we... that that kid actually got one was going to come back because I have seen this movie recently, but I forgot most of the stuff. So, like, I thought that was going to come back at some point, but it doesn't. Uh, no, that's Because he just, got one right. That's just Bill Murray being a jerk. Right, but, like, he said he was, and maybe he was lying about why he was, but he said he was testing this theory 
of negative reinforcement. And so, like, I thought it was going to be, like, a thing where, like, it actually worked even though he wasn't taking it seriously. And then that could have been helpful. But, but no, it's just, it's just for the... Uh, for the characterization of him. Uh, other things in this movie that dated... Which negative reinforcement would be electrocuting them if they got it right? No, it's like, if you get it wrong, you're electrocuted. So, like, if you have any ability, you're more likely to try harder to get it right so that you don't get electrocuted. I apologize that my dogs are barking, by the way. Um... Other things that dated this movie, other than the card catalog, uh, is a young Larry King, which threw me off. Uh, we don't, you don't really get a straight shot at him, but you see him from behind. 1984, young Larry I mean, King. Young, comparatively. He's still, he's still pretty old in 1984. He's not, he's not he's old. He's not a spring old. chicken. But yeah. yeah, now he's like super old. And then there's a, there's a scene where it shows a bunch of newspapers talking about, um the Ghostbusters and there's like a weird um I don't know what you'd call it a side story little section of the newspaper oh. talking about Princess Diana and I'm like wow that's somebody Subtext. I haven't thought of in a long Subtitle time Subtitle or whatever yeah 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 it was it was it said uh Princess Di is expecting her second child um and how many children did she have I don't I don't know I don't care about the royal family. I don't follow them. Uh, there was a Camp Wakanda mentioned in this in this movie, which yes. I, as a Marvel fan, I was like, Wakanda? But then I also remember there's a Camp Wakanda near my hometown. I love how your phone is like... And I, yeah, I know. It's never straight. Um... And it makes me wonder if the Camp Wakanda around here was named after the Camp Wakanda in this movie. Or if it's just a coincidence. I don't know. I think it might just be. It's spelled differently, I'm pretty sure. I know they're both spelled differently than the Marvel version, but I think they're also spelled differently from each other. Also, speaking of Marvel movies, there's a sky beam in this movie. And people always complain about sky beams what the in superhero movies. Beam? It's a big beam of light that goes up into the sky, like in Suicide Squad. And like in the Avengers, and like in this movie when the portal is opening, and I'm like, is this the first Skybeam movie? So like with my lamp question, uh, I challenge someone to find me an earlier version of a Skybeam in a in a movie climax. If you know any earlier Skybeams, let me know. And then just kind of another thing that made me think of other movies, the whole concept of they establish early on not to cross the streams. And then at the end, we got to cross the streams. Reminds me very much, and I realize time-wise how this works, but a movie that I had seen before I saw this one, and that I remember more than I remember this one, it's Fantastic Four with I Chris Evans as the Human Torch, and there's a big part where they're discovering their powers where Reed tells him not to go Supernova because really bad things can happen. And at the end, when they're fighting Dune, he's like, Johnny, Supernova! And he's like, I thought we agreed that was bad! And he's like, do it! And... So I feel like that, I don't know if this was the first movie that's done something like that, but I feel like the Fantastic Four uh, bit there was kind of like a reference to this. It's felt very similar. And uh, that's all I have about the movie. Um, it's, 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 you know, it's not for me. It's not my thing. I get why people like it. I don't hate it. I don't dislike it. But, like, I watched it once before, forgot most of it. I will probably not watch it again unless a fifth Ghostbusters movie comes out, and I want to do them all again. Um, how did you feel about... We also got on a weird tangent talk about product placement, and whether or not Stave Puffed would have wanted yeah, to be did... featured in this movie, or... How did you feel about the Stave Puffed if marshmallow the man movie had to it? pay a lot to be able to use it? I Honestly, I wouldn't be able to tell you if Stay Puft is even a real brand of marshmallows or not. I think it is. I don't know. I have no idea. Couldn't tell you. We're, 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 I'm looking it up. Alright, she's gonna look it up. Which means I have to vamp. Uh, Stay Puft. Doing a bad job of vamping. What is vamping? 
by stalling. Oh, well, um, Stay Puft also knows. Stay Puft, uh... Because there's definitely a marshmallow brand that I know, but it's like Jet Puffed, I think. That's like the only marshmallow brand I'm aware of, but I don't eat marshmallows a lot. So it could be a real thing, but it's also kind of, it seems like something that would be made up for a movie. So I don't know, if you owned a business, would you want your mascot to be used as the big bad guy at the end of a the major Hollywood movie? The answer is no. It's, but, not, it's not a real brand? But apparently it was based off of the Pillsbury Doughboy and the Michelin Tire Boy. I've always thought it's very similar to the Michelin Man. But Pillsbury Doughboy also makes sense. Yeah. So. We're just learning so many things today. Yeah. Um, how? Not, not from this movie, but because of this movie. How would you feel about um, Zool? Zool and... Uh, I have no feelings about Zool. What, well, Zool was... What, what was Zool? Zool was the place, right? No, I think Zool was the lady at the end. No, the lady at the end... Um, kind of looked like David Bowie with the red eyes. No, Zool was... Uh, yes, very much like David Bowie. Zool was the person that possessed Dana. The gatekeeper. Okay, so Zul was the gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. Um, the the lady at the end. How'd you feel about her? Literally, my first thought was it, it reminded me of David Bowie. Yeah, looks a lot like David Bowie. Not really sure why. He was popular at the time, right? I don't know, 1984. Yeah. Hey Google, when was Under Pressure released? The release date of Under Pressure was October 26, 1981. Yeah, he was popular then. Okay. So, kind of looked like David Bowie. <laughs> I hope I didn't set anyone's Google off. I hate it when Google ads use that phrase in their ads, because then I have to yell at all my speakers to cancel whatever they hear. I had another thought, but I lost it. Was it about any of the ghosts? How, so... I'm surprised this got a PG rating, mostly because there's a lot of smoking, a lot of drinking, but again, it's 1984. Um, there wasn't a lot. There was like a lot for today's standards, but not... There was a lot of then. smoking, not a lot of drinking, though. There was like a couple... But smoking is like, again, you're much younger than I am, but smoking has only recently been absent uh in a lot of things because like I, all i probably, remember is mrs doubtfire and uh you probably don't remember Robin when, Williams when is restaurants like, used to have smoking and not smoking sections i don't remember it but i know they used to have that and like i know disney uh several yeah, several years ago disney said that they wouldn't have any smoking in their movies so like none of the Marvel movies have them. Anyway, I'm surprised it still got a PG rating because they do say a lot of swear words and they have a lot of innuendos. But about a lot of there stuff. was it just went from PG to R, so if it wasn't enough for an R. PG was all there was. That's why they added well, the PG-13 because they were like there should be something in between here, but there wasn't. It's like there are old movies from before 1984 that are PG, that. Would shock number eight will shock you, you know. Would would surprise you now of how we think of PG now because now we think of it as you know a kids movie, but that's not what it was. G were kids movies. I think PG originally it was M for mature, and then they changed it to PG for parental guidance, you know, suggested. But R was restricted, right? That had to be quite a bit. But, you know, especially back then, like, everybody's parents drank and smoked. You know, it wasn't Everybody's parents drank and smoked and cursed. And, and made any window, you know. Yeah. Um, it wasn't as uncommon as it was today. Yeah, I guess so. 
Yeah, this movie Times is... Times changed. Times, they are changing. This movie is very dated. There are no cell phones. Notice that? There aren't even, like... But oddly, there's no, like, situation that requires a cell phone, either. Because they're always at a place that has a phone. Yeah. Um, also, they use... They buy an old firehouse. How do you feel about that? Do you think that was a good, like, movie setting? Um, I think it fits... It makes sense why they... I don't know if they were specifically looking for firehouses, but it makes sense that they want something that's got... You know, easy bay access for the vehicle. They want something that's got an alarm system. They want something that's got, you know... Well, she mentions that there's, like, sleeping quarters and lockers and showers. They want, you know, it makes sense that they want all that. Um, because they don't have a place... They were living on campus before. Right. But, like, even just, like, the idea of being on call. Yeah. You know, and, and being... Coming back from a job and, and you know, taking a shower and, and having they laundry do, facilities. Okay, so they do sleep in the same room and there is an incident that happens yeah, we, don't, we don't need to talk about but that but it's very weird that it happens while he's sleeping in the same room yeah, that was odd and like the way it was shot it shows them all in the same room and then the next bit looked like he was in his own room and i was like is was is this like a weird yeah, it dream like sequence a thing weird, it and then it weird. went back to the first shot where they were all three together so that was, that was odd. Yeah. Um, I noticed that. I was like, wait. Because it looked like you had a bunk, bunk bed in the one scene, and then the next scene it like was... Like the headboard were... looked different. But it, pro it was probably shot in two different rooms. Yeah, probably. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it, it, was, it was fine. It's a fine movie. We'll see how he likes the next one. The next one is more family-friendly. Um, I think, I think the next one is probably is, my favorite. Like, this is, one isn't my favorite. Is Bill Murray as much of a jerk in the next one? I feel like that's why I dislike this, not dislike, why I don't like it more. I don't recall if the main character the is an awful person. I don't uh, recall. Alright, well, shall we get to it? I guess we'll, we'll see you in the next video. Bye!